Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. So perhaps if we could just do a quick introduction to who you are uh, and what brings you to DGI. Absolutely. Uh, Captain Sean Osborne, I'm a Director of Geospatial Intelligence for the Canadian uh, Forces, uh, based in Ottawa, uh, Canada, and I'm here uh, learning as much as I can about uh, what the geospatial community has to offer. So you are on a panel session tomorrow. I am. Perhaps if we could talk a little bit about what you're intending to, to bring to that session. All right, tomorrow uh, we're talking about the Middle East, North Africa, and particularly the, the issues in the Gulf of Aden uh, in terms of maritime security. And very much look forward, looking forward to discussing uh, what geospatial intelligence brings to the table in terms of enhancing the ability of the, um, the maritime community to understand the, the problem space uh, they're dealing with. So what is particularly unique about the, the maritime side of geospatial intelligence? I think one of the biggest problems in the maritime uh, community is the, uh, the large space we're dealing with. Admiral Moret uh, this morning referred to the global commons, and one of the global commons, of course, is the ocean space, the, mar uh, the seas, uh, and maritime uh, uh, trade. So what kind of developments have you seen in the maritime geospatial uh, industry that are different to that of the land-based? Well, then I think some of the most important developments are the, uh, the um, uh, acquisition of radar uh, satellite data uh, from obviously space-based assets, uh, the incorporation of AIS data into those, uh, or the collection of that into those same assets or other ones that allow comparison of reported tracks from vessels uh, to where they actually are on the ocean surface. Um, and the sharing of that information is growing, although it's still a, it's still a challenge. Oh, it's actually something I was about to pick up on. And uh, how are you finding integration with those land-based services? Because obviously one of the key elements must be taking that maritime, that, that, that sea-based information and tying it in with what intelligence we've gathered from the land-based side. Absolutely. And one of the biggest challenges is, of course, the, um, uh, the type of data that you acquire from radar satellites. Uh, while it does give you 24-7 all-weather capability, it, it takes spe specially trained analysts to, uh, to develop accurate information. And then, then trying to develop a track comparison to, uh, for example, a ship has been reported uh, leaving the Gulf of Suez, heading towards the Strait of Gibraltar, reporting through AIS, um, trying to marry up that track with a radar image uh, on the surface of the sea. Now some companies, McDonald Detweiler for example, has an ocean suite uh, cap uh, data, um, data exploitation system. Uh, which allows for that, and other companies do as well. Uh, and that very much uh, helps the analysts uh, do their work in narrowing down those vessels that they would be most interested in. Vessels that might have turned off their AI AIS because they don't want to be tracked, um, or perhaps our AIS system is broken down. Um, trying to narrow the focus of effort to that very, very small percentage of vessels that are conducting illicit activities. Now, I I, I believe that as the boss, you're a very experienced naval officer. You're quite uh, relatively new to the, the geomaritime space. Uh, what are your impressions then of this arena? How it compares to, I suppose, men on the ground? Um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm very much impressed with the, the technology, obviously. Uh, whether it's electro-optical, radar, um, uh, infrared, uh, the wide variety of capabilities that the, uh, the uh, commercial sector brings to the table is truly impressive. Uh, it's really grown in the last few years. I think yesterday someone was talking about 29 satellites, uh, radar satellites, uh, up in space. Uh, bringing all of those pieces together in the future, I think, will contribute significantly to enhancing uh, global security. Uh, of course, being military, that's the focus of effort uh, for us. But as when we enhance global security, for example, off this, uh, off. Uh, contested areas such as the, uh, the Gulf of Aden with the piracy problem, um, the more fidelity we can bring to the picture, whether it's commercial or military, um, will allow more effective policing of those areas that are, are less safe. Uh, that in the long run would reduce insurance rates, reduce uh, uh, merchant costs, merchant shipping costs. Um, so in the long run, bringing a great benefit to, uh, to the global community. Um, so impressive in terms of the technology. I think we've still got some ways to go in terms of developing cooperative effort, uh, but I'm sure that will come in time. So what are the, the, the greater challenges to true global interoperability? I think, I think um, obviously, uh, commercial competitiveness is a challenge. Uh, companies don't want to necessarily give away uh, 
their, their corporate secrets, uh, obviously for good reasons. Uh, they're in business to make money and, and uh, profit uh, their shareholders. Um, but much as the uh, aeronautical community has come to uh, international standards which allow sharing of information wherever an aircraft is, uh, it's being tracked across the, uh, uh, across the airspace as it moves across the, the Atlantic or across the Pacific. Um, it's providing positional updates that's being tracked when it gets to uh, within uh, re reach of uh, land-based systems. Uh, by the same token, I think we need to move more along that path in the maritime domain um, to allow tracking of uh, not only vessels but the cargo that's contained in those vessels, containers and so on. And I think we are moving that way. Uh, there is movement in terms of uh, tracking individual containers, sharing that information uh, across the globe for law enforcement authorities, customs authorities and so on. But we're not there yet. Fair enough. But looking at the taking away from the global picture, maybe looking more specifically at the, the Canadian mm -hmm. picture, uh, having three oceans, do you see the importance of remote sensing increasing both for the Canadian military and for civilian organizations to help you maintain your military domain awareness? Absolutely. Without, without uh, systems like RadarSat, um, well, it's a Canadian system uh, and other systems such as those produced by uh, Italian companies, German companies, whatnot, it would be absolutely impossible for us to uh, develop an integrated comprehensive picture of what's happening in our ocean areas. Um, Space-based uh, surveillance systems let us focus more s uh, let us focus more specifically with uh, other assets such as aircraft or ships, which are comparatively speaking probably more costly in terms of hourly operating costs. So if we can use a radar satellite system to narrow with with AIS to narrow the focus to those you know, two or three percent of, of vessels that are, are conducting activities which are contrary to our interests, um, we can then send an aircraft or, or a UAV, for example, to more closely investigate that vessel. And if there's a need to apprehend it, then we can provide a ship uh, to launch to either a naval ship or, or other vessels to apprehend that vessel. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today, but unfortunately we are out of time. So um, I look forward very much to seeing you in the panel session later. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.